Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today as we make holiday gnomes. We're going to make a Christmas gnome and a Hanukkah gnome. They're both done the same way, the only difference is the color choices. To start with, we're going to use two sheets of 9 by 12 construction paper. One of the sheets will be for the half and one will be for the body. The body needs to only be 9 inches square. In order to get that, I'm going to take my large sheet of paper and I'm going to measure off 9 inches on the bottom and I'm going to make a mark. I'm going to go to the top, mark the 9, draw my line. I don't have to cut it off right now. I can just leave it. I'm going to take the paper and fold it over to that line and crease it hard because this is the part that I'm going to use to make my triangle. We're going to start at the top of the folded part with your ruler and you're going to go down to the open corner of the paper. You're going to take your crayon and you're going to line up the dots and draw a nice dark circle, a circle, dark, dark line. Now you take the time to cut this off. And you end up with a triangle. Now usually gnomes are not pointy, so I'm going to have you just do one more snip. Close it back up and just gently round off the corner. And now it looks a little bit more like the gnomes we see in the stores. This we can put aside. We might want to use it for arms or we might just have mittens on our gnome. We're done with the body. Now you're going to take your other 9 by 12 piece of paper and for this the hat needs to be taller so we're going to use the paper this way and what we need to do this time is we need to measure six inches our gnome's hat is only going to be six inches wide take that ruler again mark off the six mark off the six draw the line if you would like and then cut off the extra. Now what I did this time is I did put a second sheet of paper inside because I'm going to want to put a backing on my gnome so that it doesn't look like he's not finished. This one has it where the front is colored and the back is colored, so I'm going to use two. If you want to do that, that's fine too. I marked it all off. And now I'm going to draw a line from the top of the folded part to the corner, which is my three inches by three. So this is what it looks like. It's on that small skinny part. And I'm going to cut both of them at the same time. And that means I'm pretty guaranteed that they're going to be able to fit together. An added benefit of folding this comes when it comes time to put these things together. Because I have a fold on the body and I have a fold on the hat, when I get ready to glue, I just put one fold inside another and I'm ready to go with that. Again, little scrap pile over here. I'm not going to glue him down just yet because his hat's not quite finished. I could leave it straight like this, but a lot of the gnomes have them come up a little bit and down just so you get to see the nose. I'm going to take that piece of paper and I'm going to start from the middle here and just come up and swing out to the corner. And that's just going to give me a little bit of space to see his nose. His nose is pretty big as it is, but we want to see a little bit of it. So I'm just going to cut up along that line and round it off. And now I have a hat put fold to fold. And I have a hat that will be able to see his, his nose from. Now you see what I did here? I pushed it down too far. Can't do that. You only go down as far as the edge of his hat because otherwise it's going to be down really far in his face. I'm going to put this down now. The next thing we're going to glue actually will be his nose. Normally I would glue the nose to the beards, but the beards are fuzzy in some cases, especially if we, if we use yarn or cotton balls. I found paper bags, my grocery bags from Trader Joe's, and I thought they looked like a real good color. I don't have wooden beads big enough like this to make a nose. And usually store-bought gnomes seem to have wooden noses. 
so what I did is I just cut off a section, folded it in half, and I made something the size and shape almost of a walnut, if you were to go to the store and buy a walnut, a bag of walnuts. So I'm going to cut that out. I cut more than one at a time, so I have some for another project. I'm going to take the glue stick, and I'm going to glue half, the top half of my walnut, because that's what I'm going to tuck inside his hat. And press it down. And now I have his nose showing. We're getting nicely done so far. So he's looking pretty good. We're going to move on to the next thing that he needs, which will be shoes. You can make boots, but you want to kind of keep it simple. The shape I used for his boots is like a, a number eight. And I took a piece of paper and I folded it in half. We fold so many things here. And starting from the fold, I'm going to come up for his shoe. And I'm almost making like a big balloon. And I'm going to come back down. But I want this to stay together. It'll make it so much easier to glue. For this, I'm going to switch from my black crayon to the white so I can see what I'm doing here. I have my nice big shoe or boot, whatever you want to refer to it. I'm going to cut this out. This is a good time for the young ones to practice cutting because the lines are simple and we're not going too long. And if you show them how to properly hold the scissors and then always cut away, you're doing a double lesson. So I have my feet now. This top part is a good part to glue or you can glue it this way. You're going to turn and put your glue actually on the back side of the body because that's a nice straight line. I'm going to put it down on the bottom and then I'm going to take my shoes and again I'm going to match it. Put the fold into the fold and then you know both feet will look the same side and press it down. So we, we are getting up there really well. We can put arms on him if you want. And since his body is light blue, you can take some of your light blue scraps and you can just fold it in half. A simple way is to just cut off one of these corners into a triangular shape. That's going to be his sleeve. And again, I have two triangles now. Oops. If I want to, I can glue them down on the side of my gnome for arms. And then we can put mittens on. So I'm going to actually do one of each. It'll look a little strange, but you get the idea of what we want to do on here. I'm going to take my glue stick and I'm going to put glue on the top of the sleeve. I don't want it dragging on the ground. So I'm just going to glue it on so that it's almost even with the bottom of his, of his uh, body and maybe even a little bit higher because we need room for the mittens. You could glue the arms out to the side like that too. So now he has one sleeve. We'll put the other sleeve over here in case you change your mind. In order to make the mittens, again, we make tracers all the time. Your mittens, when their hands are out to the side, the thumbs are up. And when their hands are at your side, they're down. So we're going to make a mitten by taking a piece of folded paper again and we're going to draw up for the thumb and down and around for the rest of the body. When you do that, leave a longer part here because this is what has to get glued behind the, the uh, sleeve. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to do a thumb and I'm going to come up and do a mitten. If you do your mittens in a light color, you probably will be able to decorate them. Or if you have gel pens or paint pens, then you can even decorate darker colors. You might put snowflakes on, you might put stripes, you might put polka dots. So now I have cut that out and I have two mittens. I'm going to take my mitten on the one side and I'm going to put glue stick right on the cuff of the mitten and press it on his now, I don't know why I used green. I wasn't thinking clearly on that. Well, it's going to be a, a tree or a bush. 
or it's just the color that this gnome likes. And on this side, I'm just going to put his hand coming out. So you can see the difference and you can decide which way you want to go. If I really was upset, I could pop this off and change the mitten color and maybe I'll do that later. So we have mittens, we have feet, we have a nose, we have a hat, and we are getting to the interesting part of this. I'm gonna put this aside here. When you get ready to do the beard, this gets a little more complicated, not because it's difficult, you just have more choices to make. So what I'm going to do is show you some of the ways that we can make beards, lots of choices. This is a gnome that I used cotton balls for. And we did that for one of our snowman projects. I'm not gonna glue the cotton ball onto his body. What I'm actually going to do is take a coffee filter. And that sounds a little strange, but these cone coffee filters are almost the ideal size for making a gnome's beard. I would have to kind of trim it a little shorter, but it's a really good background for it. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cut this apart. I only need one edge of this to glue on. And so I cut one loose. I'm going to take my cotton balls. I'm going to start on the lower, the bottom row. And I'm just going to spread glue stick on here. And then you start taking your cotton balls. And I know you really like doing this. And you can tear them apart as much as you want and start pressing them down. You really have to press and press, press, because not every part of the cotton ball is touching the glue. And that's important. And you just continue all the way up. You go back and forth and back and forth. You can leave a little on the top. But as you're going, what you need to do is to check where it's going to go. The key to this is you line your beard up with his shoes. It can't go any lower other than otherwise he's tripping on it. So you do that and then you know where his hat is going to go. So that would be one kind of beard. I'm going to put this aside. All right, and that's this gnome. My other gnome that I worked on also has a coffee filter, but this is a different kind of coffee filter. It's not a cone shape, it's for the basket. So it comes round and it's pleated so that it'll curve into the basket. And what I did is I took two of those and I folded them in half. Not exactly meeting at the end, but just a little bit. Now I have four pieces of coffee filter. And I'm going to take it, and that's a little bit too big on my gnome. It's going to stick way, way out. So what I'm going to do is just fold it in a little bit on each side. Hold it up to the gnome, and now it's looking better. And again, you use the bottom where the feet are as your starting point. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put glue between the two filters so they don't come apart. And I'll do that and glue that and press it. And you will notice that there are lines on the coffee filters. On one of my other gnomes, I didn't cut that. But on the one I tried yesterday, I cut each of the top three layers along those folds. And it did make it look more puffy and more realistic like a beard. So I would do that first before I glue it. So I will just look at here and I will snip and snip. You don't have to go all the way to the end and then you can look at the second one. I would tell you to do this first, but if you haven't glued them together and you clip it, then it gets a little tricky trying to handle it because the coffee filter wants to fall apart. So you continue doing that. And now you take your gnome, and this time you can put glue right down the front of his body. The reason I do this sometimes is if you have to move it or make an adjustment, 
it's not super, super hard there. So now he has his beard, comes to his feet. You can cut this some more. Now he is ready to have his hat put on. And again, fold to fold. I'm going to put glue stick on the top part of this down through the middle. And as I said, we can always go back and add more glue. And I'm going to take his head and I'm going to match these ends so that it doesn't go too far down. And I'm going to flip them so that I can see the fold. I can still see the hat from behind me here. Looking good. Now I have my gnome. But you see, if we look at this, we see the back side of him, and you may not want that to show. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the glue stick again, glue just the outer edges of your hat, and maybe right down the middle, and then take your second triangle and just match it on top. And since you cut them both together, they should be almost an exact match. Press this down, and he's good to go. I'm going to take a hole puncher and punch a hole on top because we may want to hang them and just put a string in there and hang them. So he's finished. Probably what I would do is decide pretty soon whether I want another hand or just the, the mitten over here. I am going to just make a line here. It just gives some shadow. You don't have to do that, but especially with the light blue paper, you don't see it very well. I'm going to let this dry a little bit because if we start doing other things to it, it's sort of bubbly at this point. So I'm going to move him aside, and I'm going to show you the other choices of beards. I told you that we had the pom-pom one, or cotton ball. You could do either one. Then we have coffee filter. And then we have another coffee filter. I didn't realize how helpful coffee filters could be. I have two kind in my house. I have white ones for a bigger coffee pot, and I have these natural colored ones. When I made little gnomes, this was a great little beard, because sometimes the gnomes have brown beards or gray beards. But this is a little floppy to make it and use it to be cut. So I took one small filter and put it inside the big filter. And you'll notice that this is almost the exact size of what I need for a beard. It's a little wide. We can always trim that off anyhow. So what I'm going to do on, on this one, they have a little knob there, so I'm just going to snip that off. And I'm going to cut off this end. You'll see that it's pressed and it just is wrinkly and that's where they kind of have it glued together but now this is going to stay together for me I'm going to put a little bit of glue inside just to hold down the brown filter and we're good and I'm going to check it again to see if it's the right size it's a little bit bigger but we haven't made one that's too big so let's just try this you notice what's happening though is you have to cut up towards the middle. If you just cut straight, you're going to lose some of those. So you have to kind of go towards the middle. You're making almost like little triangles in a way. It's not hard. You just have to think about it. And maybe moms, if you're going to have your children doing the cutting, why don't you draw the lines for them? And that might make it a little easier because I think you'll understand better about making it at an angle. This one actually worked really well. The first couple I did didn't work so well. And what you can do then is you can take the top layer and scrunch it up. And then you can take the bottom layer and scrunch it up too. I thought that some of the brown would show through. That's why I tried to do it this way. I was a little disappointed when it didn't. But if I wanted to, I could cut the top layer just a tiny bit shorter. But what it did do is it did give some lights and darks. This side of the filter I probably should have cut free. So that it'll move. So that worked out really okay too. I'm going to take glue stick and I'm going to put it on the back of this 
filter on the top part where we haven't cut. And now I'm just going to slide it in here. This this gnome's going to have hair in the front and the back. And I'm going to, again, have it come to hide his shoes. We're really big on hiding shoes here. And press it down. And now we actually have even another type of beard that you could use. So we're doing quite well with, with all the types of beards. If you wanted to, you could always make a reversible gnome. So you've got one on this side and one on that side. And that will always work too. If you wanted to glue his hat down now, I would go and do it now. Because we're basically finished putting him together. Oh, you know what we forgot? We forgot a nose on this one. That would be tragic. So he's going to walk around without a nose. So I'm going to look and I have some more brown paper. I'm going to quickly cut a nose for him. That would not have been good. How would he smell all the good food of the holidays if he had no nose? I'm just going to put this. And again, since we don't glue everything every single inch, I can get this nose right in here. And here we go. So we have, we have a Hanukkah gnome, and we have another Hanukkah gnome, and we have really two Christmas gnomes. We have number one and number two. Now both of them are all ready to be decorated. On these gnomes that I made that were smaller, I used yarn and I wrapped it around the cardboard and then cut it free and then taped it in there. It's a little bit more difficult to do. Uh, you have to put this underneath here and glue them down, but it's a possibility. It works better for a small gnome than for a big one. And the only difference in materials is this is not a triangle, but I made the bodies out of hearts and that works really well. So the body is like a heart and I just folded up the bottom to be the feet. This is cardstock, so it stands when you fold it. This could be the little brother and the big brother, and that'll be good. Well, let's start talking about decorating some other things. I'm going to get rid of my scraps. I'm going to move some space here. I asked you to kind of look around your house and do a little field trip and see what kind of goodies you could come up with. And I did the same I looked for things that were sparkly because that always adds a nice touch when you have something that is sparkly. And I looked for other kinds of cuts of paper that we had worked with before. If you notice, my other gnomes here have chains, and we did that when we did our Halloween witches. So you could just take your Christmas colors or your Hanukkah colors. It just breaks up all this white and adds more color. Maybe you want to make silver chains or maybe you want to make gold because you have the coins. You can do just about anything you want. You might want to make a little ornament and hang something or you might want to spell out the words Merry Christmas or Happy Hanukkah and then you can put that on as a decoration for that. So these are strips that I had cut already for one of our other projects and I always save these things in a box because you never know when they're going to come in handy. Now when we're decorating these, you want to think about what you're going to do. Because we use cotton balls for his beard, I wouldn't use a cotton ball at the top of his hat. Maybe I would use a colored pom-pom. I started decorating him already, and I was looking for my strips, and what I did is curled them on the, on the pencil, and it, and it got a nice bounce. The silvery paper didn't want to do that. So if you're familiar with how to do this, where you just take a piece of paper and fold it and then back the other way and back. There's lots of projects that we do where we do this for dangly legs and things. So what happens is when you get to the end, it bounces like that. And actually, since this is the right color, I could put this on here too. And that's what I did. And I just decorated a few of them on here. And I'll put this underneath here. So that's probably all I would do with that. I don't want to. I don't want to have the same kind of decoration over and over again. But what I did come upon when I was looking, I found some Hanukkah wrapping paper, 
and not much. So it just said in light blue letters, it said Happy Hanukkah. That wouldn't show up really well on this hat. But on this one, if I wanted to decorate, maybe I would do that too. You want to kind of put them down wherever you feel it. On the silver paper, there were some words. And this said peace. This one said joy. So when you, when you glue down something shiny, it always makes it look pretty. You can kind of bounce off the lights. So that's a possibility. And then I found some other Hanukkah wrapping paper. And this had a menorah. And rather than just putting a chunk on I just kind of cut around it a little bit and left some of the background. So you have that here like this. See? So you have a couple of choices there. And then I found a picture of a dreidel. And you can always either draw your own or you can copy them on your copy machine and stuff. And again, what you would do is you would just cut around the outside edge. It gives you a frame because the dreidel handle on top is rather small and it will be hard to cut it out and make sure it stays in one piece. So this way you're just framing it out. And now if I wanted to take my glue stick and put it on here, I've got him pretty much decorated. I'm happy with what I'm writing. What you can do is, because I have silver things here, I do have glitter glue pens. And I find that they've been working very well. A white gel marker to make snowflakes wouldn't work so well, but it's too light. But this would work. When you do this, it looks like little Hershey Kisses almost, and it takes a little while for this to dry. If you're going to use a glitter pen like this, do this as a very last part because you have to set this off somewhere and leave it alone for a couple hours because there's really more glue in there. And I'm just putting a couple dots on here too. To make things matchy-matchy, that's a nice word, I have silver snowflakes, and I think I'm going to just glue a snowflake in his hand. So if you notice what I'm doing, I haven't planned out exactly what I'm doing. I'm looking at the stuff I have in front of me and going like, gee, this would look nice, and I'm going to put this snowflake in his hand. I'm going to very carefully pick him up and show you. I wish that I had a real dark blue pom-pom, but I don't. I just have this medium blue. So I'm going to put a pom-pom on his head. I'm going to use the blue just to bring in some more whoops, dark blue on the top of him. So I'm going to move my string up here. And I'm going to actually put it underneath because when I go to hang this, if I try to put it above the string, it may damage my pom-pom and knock it off. So he's ready to go. I don't want to hang him up because I can, I can see this glue already dragging. So we're going to lay him down. But that would be that would be how you would choose to decorate him. For the girl or boy, well, actually, it's a boy. No, I didn't start on this one yet. Um, I did the same thing. I went through and I looked for wrapping paper, and I found some wrapping paper that had Santa Clauses on it, and I did the same thing as the manure. I cut around the outside edge if I wanted to glue this down on my gnome's hat I could do that I'm going to put this one closer to the top because I haven't really done that on any of them and then I go he's holding a present in his hand so maybe when you go to do this maybe you want to cut out a box and put a little present in there or glue down something that looks like a picture from the paper or the magazines or something too and the same the same thing can happen with this you could always and same thing with a with the Hanukkah one you could always take a regular Elmer's glue and just make zigzags or scallops and then use regular glitter. That tends to get a little messy, so just be prepared for that. So I think we have just about covered every kind of beard. We have the cotton balls. We have, oops, I just put my finger in the glue. And we have one type of coffee filter. We have another type of coffee filter. 
we talked about yarn, but there's one other kind of paper beer that we didn't do. This is just torn paper. So this would be the last kind of beard you could decide upon. I gave him a hand this time and it's sort of holding the beard on. And all I did for this is I took a sheet of paper, I folded it in half, I made the top part a little bit shorter, and I just started tearing it. Now for the younger children, you may want to use scissors. For those of you who are older, you can go ahead and tear it. It makes it look a little scraggly. So before I put his arms on, it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to put glue stick at the top of my beard now. And remember, the feet tell us how long. So I'm just going to match up to where it's covering my feet. And I'm going to glue it down to the top part here. And press him down. You can always wrinkle this some more. I did not glue on his arms before. So I'll just do that a little bit now. And his arms are up in the air, so he might be able to hold something in his hand. Maybe you might have a picture of a dreidel, so you might want to put a dreidel in one hand. I don't know about a manure. That's, it would be a little heavy for you to draw a picture of him to do that. The only thing that he's missing now is a hat. But I do have a hat from another project. And it has a nose already on it. So this is using a circle to make a cone hat. And now just to show you how he looks finished, I'm going to put him on here. He kind of looks like, oops, he got stuck here. He kind of looks like the um, gnome that advertises with the travel company. So there we go. What I did on this is I tried to make a Christmas tree using this to be the strand for the lights, but the crayon didn't show up very well. So if you're going to use crayons, you want to use white. So he's all set too. So we have all these kinds of beards. We have different kinds of shapes. And I hope you had a really good time learning how to make some gnomes. You can make them any size you want. You just have to start out with a square piece of paper and make your basic shape. So on that happy note, I hope you have a nice holiday, and I hope you come back and see us at the next presentation we do in a couple weeks. Bye now.